I'm Glyn from Mr. Glyn's Pickups and today I'm going to be having a chat with a Kiwi legend. This is Ben Fulton from Red Witch Pedals. His client list includes Andy Summers, Steve Vai, etc. Enough of me, let's get on with it. Please subscribe. Thank you. Hi Ben, really nice to talk to you mate. Lovely to be here with you, Glenn. Yeah, I, it's when when I think of guitar effects in New Zealand, there are two names. There's there's Ben Fulton and Paul Crowther from Hot Cake fame. You you must know Paul. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I'm a good friend of Paul, with Paul. Um, yeah, he's the Godfather, and not just in New Zealand, but he's the Godfather internationally in many respects because. He started, you know, making the hot cake at home in the 70s and long before the boutique sort of thing started happening in that first wave, you know, a decade and a bit later. Um, so, you know, and Paul's he's just a lovely human being and phenomenal pedal designer too. And a great engineer, audio engineer, live uh, engineer, um, just all around Boston. So, yeah, he's, he's you know, he's... He's the OG. Yeah, right. So did you start off as a player? Yes, yeah. I um, Basically, I, I left high school. I went to university. I studied criminal psychology for a couple of years and then made the logical jump to jazz guitar. Um, I studied jazz guitar um, at the Conservatorium in Wellington for three years, which it took about three years to work out that I absolutely am not a jazz guitarist. Um, and then I, um, I did a bunch of stuff and played in some bands and, and then I did a lot of solo acoustic stuff. Um, and I, um, I, uh, forged a friendship with, uh, Paul Urbana Jones, who's you know, a phenomenal acoustic, um, songwriter, musician, guitarist. Um, and he was very generous to me in my early twenties and, uh, invited me to tour with them in New Zealand and we tour in Australia and uh, you know I was obsessed with um, with Nick Drake and and uh, Bert Yanch and and Jeff Buckley and wanted to try and be a blend of all of those things which mm, anyway um, and and then I yeah I, I, I um, um, read which kind of came out of a situation where um, I um, had kind of given away all the electric guitars and so on um, and amps and that when I started the acoustic thing and I did that for about three and a half years and then a friend of mine sort of suggested we get a band together and that sort of planted the sort of seed because I'd always been an electric player like it was Led Zeppelin that sort of started me Jimmy Page started me on the course playing playing guitar originally and um, and so that sort of started you know I needed some gear and that was where where everything sort of kicked off Right. So you said you said Jimmy Page start. I mean, what was there a, an actual moment? Mm. It, yeah, it was Rock in the Box. It was Rock in the Box 1990-91 with Robert Rackety. Uh, and my brother and I were at home. Um, I would have been 15. And um, yeah, and it was just the, like a, he was a VJ for the night and all these different clips coming through. And we were video recording them and um Stairway to Heaven, the live version appeared um from the song of the same film, 1973, Madison Square Garden, the double necks, or the double neck and the mirrors, and um and um yeah, it just it was like a lightning bolt. And the crazy thing is, you know, as cliched as it is, you know, it's uh, Stairway to Heaven, uh, but that live version. Uh, you know, I hear it now and I still am affected by it, you know, and yeah. that whole band's catalogue really doesn't change. So was it was it that guitar sound? The the sound that as I got further into it, the sound that um that really uh, blew me away was actually his Les Paul sound on that record on that on that film. And particularly the the sound that he had in their version of Since I've Been Loving You, uh, which quite a few decades later sort of resulted in another company that I started with a friend of mine in the States, but we, we, we can get into that into a bit. Right. Yeah. Funny those moments, isn't it? Because I had one, you know, I was probably about 16, and um, um, my mate, who I still know, lives in New Zealand now, he, he lent me his brother's copy of ACDC's High Voltage. 
and it was yeah. that Mal- Malcolm Young's guitar sound that yes. completely and it, and it, and his brother didn't know obviously that he lent me his copy because that's what brothers do. Yeah. I have since thanked him. So thank thanks again, Will. Um, so yeah, and it was just that sound, that, yeah. that Malcolm Young sound for for me that just did it. Yeah, and it's funny because chatting with people about those sort of lightning bolt moments quite often it's 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 a it's a visceral sound you know so malcolm young is in the, you know his guitar sound was an incredibly visceral sound it was very immediate very direct you know pages sound and the song remains the same uh you know there's a very immediate sort of a thing you know mick ronson's another player i've always loved and and you know for me personally you know i've always been drawn to players that are very laser beam like in the way they play it's you know, it's quite a, it'll be a, like Malcolm's would have been a scary sound to play with. Pages as well, Mick Ronson's as well, because there's nowhere to hide with it. It's, it's, it's just there. It's, it's, you know, it sort of, uh, it requires some courage to play with that sound. Yeah. Um, yeah. But no, that's a, that's a, that's a great album. Yeah. yeah. Down. So what, so what got you, got you into the electronics then? How did you start with that? Well, I was I was really always interested in electronics as a kid, um, and I, you know, when I was like twelve or thirteen, I, I was quite interested in pursuing that. And um, when I went through high school, I um, my I was always rubbish at maths, and I had a few friends, so I, I tinkered around a bit, built a few crazy things. Um, but I'd sort of thought to go and study it, but like my maths wasn't great, and um, a couple of people who were sort of mentors were like, yeah, you probably would need the maths you know and so I sort of you know let it sort of fall by the wayside and then it was really only when we decided to form this band and there wasn't the money there to go out and buy an amp uh, or or pedals and so on and my uh, um, girlfriend at the time bought me a Holden 50 head from a second hand shop in Rotorua that didn't work and um and so i was like well i've got to make this work and and i and i did and i've still got it and um and from there i was like well i'm gonna need some pedals so i started you know um uh, having a little play and experiment i needed this and i needed that and and pretty swiftly within a few weeks i was like i'm I'm going to start a pedal company. I'm going to design and make pedals. I'm just, it's really nice to, to say pedals because when the way uh, as Kiwis we say pedals, when you say pedals in America, you get a lot of laughter. Paddles, <laughs> pedals. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so just this, I decided that it's, that was what I wanted to do, and I, I you know, um, I've always sort of been quite. Once I get an idea, I'm, I'm going to sort of run with it. And I spent six months um, kind of doing, I looked at going and studying electronics, um, but I was really only interested in audio electronics, analog audio electronics. And um, there was nothing that was sort of, it looked like it was sort of in short and intense uh, information wise. So I, I got a bunch of books and, uh, and this is 2002. 2003 um so there was you know the the the, there there was a bit of information online but not an enormous amount um so yeah i sort of spent six months sort of diving in deep and then thought well i I need to design something of my own and i always really loved the sound of phases and i started playing with different ideas and and the moon phaser was the first thing that came out and that is a fit based phaser and it lets you get phasing sounds and it gives you a tremolo sound and it gives you two options of getting the tremolo and the phase occurring at the same time, which which no one had done. And so that was kind of cool. And that sort of set the template of like, I don't want to make copies of things. Um, because at the time there were there were people um, who were uh, doing versions of products that were out of production and so on. And it's totally great because, you know, if you wanted something that's fantastic, you either pay an exorbitant amount of money for it secondhand and, and of questionable um, um, stability and so on, you know, being an old piece of electronics or, you know, buy something that someone's made that's a, a reproduction. Um, but I just, yeah, I, I personally, I was I was more interested in, in 
doing something that was u unique and that kind of set the template um, for all of the stuff that um, that, that I'd, I've done with Red Witch um, because they're all original designs. They're not copies of, of things. And that's not knocking anyone that makes copies of stuff. That's it's fine. But that wasn't what I was interested in. Yeah. Mm. That's... So surely you, mu you must be starting with a basic kind of idea of what, like, say, a phaser is. But then what would you do? Say, I want more depth. I want more... Well, with the moon phaser, like, you know, there's different ways you can get phase shift to occur. And, and you know, there's um, there's a thing called an operational transconductance amplifier. It's quite impressive sounding. Right. Um, and, and some designs use those. And then uh, some use FETs. And some use uh, a, like a, um, a variable resistor with a pulsing light source, like a photoresistor. And... Um, so I was, I, I, you know, I, I decided that that I wanted to do something with FETs, and so you know, the, there's um, there's a, a, a number of, of classic designs that use FETs, and uh, you know, so like the the, the Phase ninety uh, uses FETs, and then um, there's a number of other classic designs that use FETs, and so I, and the, the reason I like the FET design was that it enables you. Um, it's not as finicky as using um, uh, light defending resistor with photocell. Um, you're able to isolate each step of the phase shift. And that was what sort of opened the door to be able to go, oh, I can do this and pull that out of it and pull that out of it as far as the different functions in the, in the third dial, the um, cosmology um, control. Yeah. Right. Mm. Wow. And that, do you still make that pedal? No, uh, not currently. So, you know, Redwich has gone through a whole lot of different yeah. changes. It got really big, and then um, and then uh, a variety of things occurred. Um, and I only owned uh, uh, ten percent of the company for um, the last chunk of that time, um, because that's what happens when you start a company and you bring other people on board, and you know, you uh, um, you your shareholding shifts uh, but in exchange for that you know you, you more resources for things um but anyway um i ended up buying the um uh, the brand back uh, about two and a half years ago and so um what i've been really focused on is new stuff um yeah. and so we've done you know did, we did a fuzz god three and then just done the fuzz god four um so it's you know um and so for me i, I i've always liked that thing of, with uh with with like apple you know the the monster company that they would just they you know you can't go and, and obviously they're computers and it's text you know high tech stuff but it, but just that thing of like you know it's the next version it's it's an improved version it just offers more than the previous one um and i i, I like that and it, the thing is it's um you know, it it, uh, it takes the same effort as far as production goes to do a new production of something that exists versus doing a production of something that's completely new. And because, you know, it's shifted back to being a smaller company, um, you know, the the amount of stock that you can carry, like Redwich um, in its previous um, um, format, you know, we had 19 products and, um, you know, that suddenly becomes an enormous amount of stock you have to carry when you're supplying international distributors and things so for what i'm doing now it's a, it's a smaller um pared down version which is great because i you know i had to look long and hard at what did i want to do and where is the passion and where's the um you know the love um for the process and it was you know i like making pedals i like designing pedals um so yeah, that's where things are focused at. Yeah. So the first God four you mentioned, I've I've had a look at. I mean, what I, one of the things I really like is you do your own demos. Yeah. And you looks like you're looking at YouTube. Looks like you always have. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's funny, like because I, you know, I think people are either they're either uh, uh, an engineer who plays a bit of guitar, who an electronics engineer who plays a bit of guitar. Or you're a guitarist who does a bit of electronic engineering, and I definitely identify more with being a player 
who's learned how to do this. Um, right. And I've now been doing it for quite a while. But the, the thing with that is that, you know, that's always guided the, you know, the, directed the design. It's like, uh, if it sounds good to me, then that's that's fine. And that's the only thing that I think that differentiates, you know, if there's only one quality that I've sort of realized is there is that when I design stuff, when I think it sounds cool, there's a bunch of players out there who are far better players than, you know, than I'll ever be and more successful as a guitar player than I'll ever be, who also really like that sound. And, you know, the kind of the people that have used the stuff I've designed is testimony to that. But um, the, the the funny thing is, like when I design it, I know what it can do and what it'll, what it'll sound cool doing to my mind. And so, and it's funny, like you know, trade shows like the Nam Nam show and and so on. You know, when people come up and play, it's um sometimes it's easy just to go, well, these are the things that I designed it to do. Now you can go and do what you want with it, but but um you know, I'll show you what it can do, which is a strange thing when when you know more famous people turn up and they're used to being the person who's playing. <laughs> There's this pushy guy from New Zealand go, well, hey, God, let me just show you what, it, and then you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But don't you like that when people take it and, like, there's a there's a, there's a a customer of mine, he, 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 he bought some of my Strat pickups, and he's done a fantastic demo of playing Eruption. And I was not thinking of Eruption at all when I, when I, when I made these pickups, but I really like the fact that he's taking oh. it yeah, maybe that'll just work for this. Absolutely. Oh, it, you know, I, I um, it's a strange universe we live in, and and that people, you know, looking to buy something, and and people have got different motivations for getting gear, as as we both know. You know, there are people who are you know focused on creating music. Uh, there are people who are focused on getting sounds that are familiar that they love because they love persons, you know, ex bands playing or ex guitarists playing. And then the people who just love gear and all three are fantastic. Yeah. Um, but the thing with that creative process, I, you know, it's strange that we live in this universe now where there are, you know, you watch a million demos of something before you decide to buy it. And, you know, it's that thing of being able to sort of get a, a feel for what it does versus make a decision about what it does. And it's like, um, you know, I always sort of go back to thinking about um, Hendrix and how he used, uh, pedals and um, the, the the context, you know, there weren't that many pedals around at the time, and um, you know, Roger Mayer was making stuff for him, and he'd get something, and he wouldn't be like, you know, he'd just plug into and be like, you know, this sounds like Venusian spaceships three thousand meters under the water or whatever it sounds to him. He's not like, you know. Oh, that sounds like a blend of the full tone coral flange and the and the uh, and the jazz, just blah blah blah. You know, um, I had a strange scenario when I um, uh, designed the first uh, synthetron pedal, and there was one unit at that point, and I'd finished it the, like twenty four hours before going to the states for the NAM show, and I put it on the bench and I filmed a quick demo, just literally on the bench, just making some sounds, and it was the most polarizing thing because. Half the people commenting on it, like it got a lot of hits, and, and half the people commenting on it were were saying this thing sounds amazing. It's just you know it's a, it opens a, all sorts of possibilities, and then the other half of people were like you know this guy's smoking crack now, which <laughs> wasn't, wasn't true. Um, but but that sort of thing. But the, the funniest thing was there were people going, oh, it's just the this and the this and this, and it's like there's only one of these, and it's on the bench here. No one's played through it, and people. Uh, still, you know, the people seem to be quite quick to go, oh, it's this, this, and this. And, yeah. you know, if you play, and I'm sure it's the same with pickups, you know, it's like there's there's actually, if you have all of these preconceptions, um, it maybe robs you of, of being able to feel that, that quite, you know, visceral, quite, um, you know, organic connection. Like the pickups that you, you sent up to me, and I, I played them in, it was just like, it's great. It's awesome. It's very alive, you know, really, you know. Um, and that's, I guess, with any piece of gear is, you know, if, if you if you wanted to create and so on, you wanted to plug into something that makes you go, oh, wow, you know. Yeah. But um, but circling back to the demos, yeah, I've, I've always done them just because, like, I know what I like to sort of, you know, so I'm not saying this is all it can do, but I just think, well, I can show 
what I think it can do. And then, um, yeah. You know, I, I, what I find interesting with, when you say with what people's, some people think this is what this bit of gear is for, is, is the Telecaster. Because there's a lot of people who pick a telly up and just do country. That's what a Telecaster is. It's a country guitar. But it's just not. And, and if you look now at, the, at, at Fender's demos of, of Telecasters in the last couple of years, people are not playing country on them. Mm. You know, that, but there's a lot of perception that that's what it's for. But they do mm. so much. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, Keith Richards is, you know, an, an iconoclast of, of the Telecaster. Jimmy Page recorded Led Zeppelin one on a Telecaster. Um, Bill Frizzell, you know, primarily uses a Telecaster, and, and that's in, in, in another totally different universe. Though he, he's had some country, he's done some country stuff, but, you know, I wouldn't class him. He was yeah. a country player. Nor a jazz player. He's just kind of a, an extraordinary force of nature. Yeah. Yeah. But, but yeah, that's the thing. That in, in the end, gear is just, they're just tools and, and or colors on a palette. And, and it just comes down to, you know, if you want to use it how it says, you know, this is for that, do that with it. If that's, you know, that's, that's fine. But it's that thing of, you know, some of the coolest sounds are, you know, I think through using things in ways they were intended. Uh, Sylvia Massey um, is pretty extraordinary with, with her recording history and so on. And she's made a career of doing some pretty um, amazing things with stuff that's not meant to be, you know, done. Guns, cliffs, pianos. <laughs> Jimmy Page, because you mentioned him with a, with a Telecaster. I was thinking the other day, how, you know, what sort of sound he was using in the early 70s. And the, but it, I mean, it was nothing to do with the guitars because he sounds almost the same on a Telecaster than he does in a Les Paul. You know, it's definitely him. But obviously the player has a huge influence. But what, what else is, I mean, you've obviously, yeah, I think you've studied Jimmy Page's sound a lot more than most people. I so more what, than you should. <laughs> so what, what, what was in there that was... What, what would you what would you say is the most distinctive part of that sound? Well, I, you know, it's a cliche thing to say, but it, it, it's fingers. You know, it's like yeah. um, like I saw a video clip the other day of uh, Emily Malmsteen, who um, Fender had given him one of the Jimmy Page reissue Dragon Telecasters, and Ingrid sort of picks up and jingles his jewelry and so on, <laughs> just plays Emily Malmsteen. It sounds like it's through his rig. It sounds like Emily Malmsteen, you know, and like yeah. Jeff Beck. Sounds like Jeff Beck, you know. But I think as far as Page's sound, you know, on that first album, you know, there's the famous Supro uh, with the single 15 in it and uh, the, the tone bender, which they go there. Oh, um, yeah. In one of those and the Telecaster and a wah pedal. And that was what he was touring with as well. Uh, not the Supro, obviously. But, you know, there's... The thing with him is he'd been a session guy and... He was enormously, uh, you know, adventurous sonically, and it was one of those sort of people. I think that if it, if it if it worked, that's what was going to be used. So, you know, I used to think Led Zeppelin too. That was you know um, Marshalls and so on. But it turns out that for at least a decent chunk of the tracking for the guitar parts at Olympic Studios in London, he'd used um, um, uh, Rickenbacker amps. Which, yeah, which, you know, um, but it's the thing with Page too is that he was such a, um, he was such a studio kind of guru. He understood about mic placement and about, you know, all the sort of other things because, you know, if you, you could take any amplifier and put a 57 in front of the cone and then you move it off axis with a pair of headphones on, it's going to sound really different. You know, so having a kind of understanding of all of that sort of stuff, I think. Um, but, you know, I know he went back to the Telecaster and the Supro uh, allegedly for the, the solo for the studio version of Stairway to Heaven, but he used a bunch of stuff, uh, you know, there's Voxes and obviously Marshalls and um, Twins, you know. I think it was that whole thing. Again, he was definitely someone who operated from that position of viewing it all as a palette. So what was the, yeah. you know, yeah. Wow. Hey, so 
I mean, I was when I was listening the other day, I was thinking of the fuzzy sounds. I knew I was going to be talking to you, the fuzz sounds that he had. And then I watched your Fuzz God 4 demos, and there's loads of them. Yeah. And, wow. I can see that. I can see, you know, you're saying about no, not making the old pale. I can see that, that being an evolution because there's a lot going on there. I was quite amazed by all the different. Yeah. Versions. Yeah. It was. It was one of those ones where I was like, yeah, I'll do the demo for this. And then it was like, it's quite a lot to sort of cover. And, yeah. you know, and it's, just, you know, even just in the microcosm of, of, of fuzz sounds, you know, there's the people who like the, the kind of the, um, you know, range mastery sort of light fuzzy sort of thing of the, you know, John Mayle Blues Breakers album with Clapton on it and, and then there's the doom sort of fuzz thing and there's sabbath and you know and then there's hendrix and there's a whole lot of different sort of flavors just within the, the fuzz thing and then doing the crazy oscillation stuff which the fuzz god apart from fuzz god three they've always had that and um and then putting the uh germanium octavia was like i just really like that i think that's an awesome thing to click in when you're doing a solo you just want to you know lift yeah. it up but yeah, no, fuzz, the 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 may yeah the the fuzz god five isn't far away. Oh really? That might be that might be the fuzz to to stay. To be honest, I think for for for, for the for for the foreseeable future. But because um, obviously the um, the binary stars, the one that's just come out, and um, and it's been really it's been a really you know well received. But it's um again it's doing something slightly different in the sort of delay modulated yeah. delay chorus sort of thing and that was it was really you know i really enjoyed putting that together but that's a new format as well so we're potentially looking to do the fuzz god five within that um yeah so so the so the binary star i mean it's it's i love all that analog delay stuff where it, it sort of sags behind and you get all these boom 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 sort of sounds and did that take yeah. a long time to in development yeah, well, the, the thing is, it's an analog flavor delay. You know, the core of it is a, is a digital engine, um, mm -hmm. but it's it's all of the like the dry signal through it is all that analog, and then all of the actual tone adjustment to the sound um, as it passes through the the delay section is analog. Because the thing is, with with analog delays, you know, people don't sort of real you know necessarily um, realize this, but the reason analog delays sound like analog delays is because the bucket brigade chip, which was the kind of the heart of the delay, they're really noisy. They're really, really noisy, and you get a lot of hiss. And so they put it through a thing called a compander, which was a compression and expansion. And then they would roll all the high end off. And that's why analog delays sound warm. And, you know, there's not that clarity that you have with a digital delay. So the actual thing at the heart of all of that if it doesn't really matter whether it's digital or analog. It just, you know, if it's analog, it's going to be less efficient and it's going to um, cost a lot more and um, it's going to take a lot more space. Um, but it was, um, yeah, I just wanted to do something different and I hadn't encountered anything which did the, um, you know, standard delay stuff, let you get some chorusy things and then get right into that really pitch shifted sort of stuff where it's almost doing a step delay in, in, um, in relation to the modulation. But yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah. I, you know, for me, like with designing a pedal when I'm testing them before they go out, I know it's a good pedal if I sort of find myself spending far too much time playing through each one. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I was I always judge a guitar by if it makes me do something I didn't know. Yeah. You know, if you pick a, pick a, pick a guitar up, and you know some, especially older guitars, they steer you off in directions that, that yeah. you, you go in. Oh, that's that's definitely a good instrument. Then. Oh, the number of like the I I don't know about you, but my my iPhone, it's got stacks of little song ideas that most of them come in work either work on designing pedals or or testing pedals because you'd be playing and be like, oh, this is kind of you know a million ideas that the world will never hear. Um, and the world is a better place for it, but um. The um, but that thing of you know yeah of, of stuff uh, being um, being pulled out, being revealed, it's like a little portal. How many things came out when you were testing the synth um, yeah the synthetron two? Because that's oh. that's 
just but I, I i i really like the envelope filter in there i love that it's a really vocal envelope filter isn't it yeah well it does it does the, the it does the envelope filter but it does the sample hold stuff and things that was an interesting one because i wanted you know that i wanted to do i wanted to improve some of the the the, the um features of the first of the synthetron one and um yeah that was quite a process that's probably all i say about that it was intense but um it's um yeah it's it's an all analog thing trying to convert um you know um signal to voltage in a, in a pretty old-fashioned way um this this there's really clever ways of doing it, but I didn't want it to be clever. I wanted it to sound glitchy and strange. <laughs> Brilliant. You didn't want to be clever. Not at yeah. all. <laughs> cool. So what's in so what's in the pipeline? You mentioned the Fuzz God five. Yeah. Uh, um that's that's definitely a possibility. The the other thing is I've I've got um I've started two other companies with um, some friends in the States, um, and one of them is with um, my friend Jack, who has a distribution company over there, and um, and a bass player named Neil Jason, who's just one of like those guys that he played. He was the bass player in the Brecker Brothers when they did heavy metal bebop in the 70s. He played with John Lennon and Joni Mitchell. He played a chunk of the bass lines on Brothers in Arms, the Dire Straits album. Like he's one of those guys and he's he he's good friends with jack and kind of long story short there was a company in the 70s called sea moon um that had produced pretty much one pedal that was really cool called the the um the funk machine it was an envelope filter and so basically they went out of business in the 70s and um jack got the rights to it and i redesigned this um this envelope filter so it was updated so it could work with modern bases and things and um so that's that's what i'm floating at somewhere ah that's this guy here um the artwork was done by gina keel who's a wellington based artist who does oh. phenomenal stuff and um particularly cool because uh, uh her dad was a bass player and um so it's a bass pedal and all, yeah. all the family. But um, yeah, so that and that that kicked off uh, sort of launched last year at the NAM show, and that's that's gone um, been going well. Uh, and then this other company that I formed with Jack called Imperial Electrical, and the first product out of the gate, which it actually hasn't been, it'll be available in probably about three weeks time. But it's this thing okay. called Zeppelin, and it's uh, it basically gets you that. Less poorly um, sound from the uh, the song and the same um, show that I was referring to by that band. Be careful now, <laughs> but it's yeah, it's 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 a particular sound and and it it, it sounds sounds really cool. So those are the things that have sort of like with the, with the Zeppelin pedal, it's just the last little sort of final stages of that and. Um, and then with Sea uh, Moon, there's uh, there's another product in the in the in the wings that I'm working on, and then um, with Red Witch, yeah, the Fuzz God Five, um, and then potentially something quite different to anything we've done before. And I've got one other idea for something that's like it's 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 a big project, which it may or may not occur, but but it, 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 it something comprehensive and large. Um, that's probably all I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine that's fine yeah you've said you've said you said enough mate wow because yeah when you say something different i think i look at what you've done like the binary star and the synthetron and go wow you're, yeah. you're, 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 pre you're pretty different already yeah well you know i think you gotta just i guess be you gotta try and be true to yourself and and yeah. do things that you uh you know that 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 you like the sound of you know because at the end of the day You've you've got to be um, you know you've got to be uh, keeping yourself happy. You know I remember some years ago um, uh, there was a a large pickup manufacturer manufacturer um, that had done some pedals and um, they hadn't really had the reaction or reception that they'd wanted and so through some people we we had some conversations and so on and. And um, and I was I was it was it would have been a cool thing to do, but I'd sort of you know uh, I'd said that uh, 
for me, it's like I'll design you something cool and that's that. But the process of um, having, uh, you know, people giving feedback and then beta testing and then feeding back and, and so on, which, you know, for large companies, that's what they do. But like, you know, it's um, in the end, it, it's like you've got to, for me, I've got to make stuff that, that, um, that makes you happy. And and that, and that company did release a new range of pedals with someone else doing, and and they're really cool pedals too. So it all worked out fine. But I think um, you know, if you make things that when you play them you sort of smile and you feel like playing, then you know, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah. And you and you you're still playing that? Yeah, I, I not not a lot last year because obviously the lockdown and so on, and and also I spent a lot of time focusing on on the. Um, on the company um i did i did one gig last year it was in december it was um there was a uh, show in wellington for aaron tokena um uh, played in the hoary buzz with aaron and he sadly passed away um and so this show was put on and it was it was yeah it was cool it was cool it was strange playing his songs without him there though yeah yeah mm. he just like talking about players who play with laser beams you know like you know he was uh, he was a phenomenal guitar player a musician as well you know and songwriter and singer like he was pretty extraordinary yeah so yeah so that was the one gig of last year but it was it was it was a good one um yeah it's good keeping your hand in isn't it definitely no i don't think i mean i've i've, I've been in the same covers band for 15 years because awesome. they're, they're my best, they're my best mates, and there's never been a harsh word spoken, and, and we all have such a laugh. And I do other stuff as well, but um, yeah, I think I've realised. I think I'll probably I'll probably play in that band until until I can't stand up anymore, and I'll probably gig sitting down. Nice. It, it's yeah, it's good. It's it's a good it's a good feeling having that. It's just a we don't we don't gig all the time. Just like once a month. Well, in normal times, it's once a month. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's really. I don't. I don't think. I don't think I could not do it now. Yeah. Oh, it's that's the the crazy thing is that you know the the music is the thing itself. You know, and it doesn't matter how big or small or or you know if it's just with friends or touring the world. In the end, it's like you know when you close your eyes. It doesn't matter whether there's fifteen people there, fifteen thousand people there. Like obviously, you know, bigger noise, more you know, screen more pressure. But but the real root, I think, if you know, is is that um, the just that magic, you know, the, the the pursuit of the of that thing flowing through you that is not of you. Um, those moments where you know, it's like I'm not quite sure what happened there, but it was really enjoyable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So one, one thing I find is that. Although, especially with covers, some of it feels a bit throwaway. But I've had people come up at the end of gigs and they've had a great time. Or there was one woman who came up to me at the end of a gig and said, you know, I've had a bereavement in the family and I've, I have been, I've been, realised I've been in the house for, for eight weeks and haven't gone out. And now I came to this pub and you guys were playing and, and I stayed because it was such, a fun, such fun. And, I, you know, it actually really meant something to somebody. Mm. Really, I and think it's get that when you're on a stage and go yeah 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 I do this every week it's really easy to forget that it can be very important oh absolutely it, you know without a doubt you know when I was touring doing the solo acoustic thing in my early 20s you know I was definitely a little bit misguided in thinking how important what I was doing was but you know the the, the whole idea of you know some artistic truth and blah 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 and, but in the end it's like it's 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 as you say it's 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 the impact you know you don't know you could be playing a song you've played you know 300 times and go through the motions again but someone walks through the door and they hear that song and it changes the perspective in that moment and affects the outcome of the evening for them and you know that could be all sorts of possible things positive mm -hmm. things you know um yeah you know it's it's such an extraordinary thing music you know and it's great to be you know involved in it isn't it great yeah it's it's it's, it's really good i really love what you've 
what you're doing with these videos too, because I've watched a bunch of them and sort of seen people that I, I wasn't aware of, you know, that are doing cool things. And it's, and it is great, you know, in New Zealand, it's such a small spot. It's, um, it's a really nice thing to be able to kind of, to see other people that are doing things. And there's such talented people here, you know, um, you know, obviously you talked about Paul um, Crowther, who, you know, he's, he's been doing it um, remarkably for um, a long time. And it's such a great pedal. Like, I've, yeah. You know, yeah, there it is. Um, and, you know, prunes and custard and double hot cake. And, but, um, but there's all sorts of people who are doing amazing things. You know, my, um, I have a few friends that make guitars. Uh, my buddy, Jamie Agnew, who's made a bunch of instruments for me, he makes amazing stuff. He's based in Rotorua and does repairs there as well. And, and um, James Rochester, who's in, he's in uh, Napier. He and his wife run a venue called Paisley Stage, but he also makes amazing guitars. And um, down here is Ray Mercer, who's uh, another the OG. Um, and, uh, hey, you know, so there's that sort of community. And, and then in the pedal thing, like, as I start watching the videos, it's been amazing. It's like, wow, there's a real, real sort of scene going there. And, like, there's a, a, a guy, um, uh, Lee Nicholson, who, who I know, who started a company a few years ago um, doing Lightning Wave. And I'm aware of, you know, he, he, I, I know Lee. And I just and I know that they're doing some really cool, interesting stuff. Mm. Um, you know, and it's great because here we all are. And it's like, there's not that many of us. It makes sort of sense to, uh, you know, to be aware and, and, and have that support, supportive community thing going on. And yeah. I like, as I say, I like, I like, I like your, I like your concept for the video and I like the way you, you know, your energy is great. Well, I just, yeah, I just think everyone should know each other. And as you know, I'm not afraid just to phone somebody up and have a chat, <laughs> which is, yeah. And, and yeah, it's really nice. There's a couple of little offshoots have come off it, like a couple of people have got together um and and done some stuff so that's yeah i'm, I'm, I'm keeping going with this yeah and, and i and i'd like some if you can put me in contact with those people you've mentioned there um yes i, I, I tried i tried finding ray mercer but i couldn't i can't, I couldn't find him so he's yeah he's he's break a bay in, in wellington uh but uh, i'll yeah i'll probably be chatting to him next week or two so uh, you know oh that'd be good he's, he's great he's just he's he'd be a fantastic guest you know? yeah um He'd probably have more. He's uh, quite a bit older than me. He'd probably have more energy than me today. I'm a little on the sort of a little little stretch today, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, but no. So I totally um, could put you in touch with those guys. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah. Cool. Hey, well, really nice talking to you, Ben. It's been uh, it's been it's it's been fascinating. Thank you oh. very much. Well, thanks heaps for, for having me. It's been a pleasure to chat. And um, yeah. yeah. And hey, let, let's do it again in about a year or something, or whenever you know, some, um, and we can talk about some uh, the new, because you've got so much going on. <laughs> I'd like to hear about what the, the, the new stuff that you, you can't quite talk about. Yeah. Oh, look, that would be a real pleasure. And um, as I say, when we do the video for this, you'll be seeing the, there'll be a Jamie Agnew guitar with, uh, with, with your pickups in it the thing so it's going to be nice to be doing uh representing a bit of new zealand and that so right yeah with the, with the kiwi playing it and yeah yeah pedals paddles pedals <laughs> bean from reedwich uh goodness <laughs>